All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. E3 2019 just happened. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. There may be a video coming out before this one about the entire E3 press conferences and stuff. This video is just going to be my top 10 games from E3 2019. I usually do two E3 videos a year. One that I just mentioned where I talk about the, the conferences and stuff. And then one where I talk about my top 10 games. Not sure which one's going to come out first this year but um yeah we're gonna talk about our top 10 games from e3 2019 let's go ahead and get this thing started so number 10 is actually a nintendo game i do have a nintendo switch i don't really play it as much as i probably should for how much money i spent on it but number 10 is animal crossing new horizons i believe is it's called um animal crossing is a game that i have played quite a bit on the DS, the Nintendo DS. I didn't really play too much of the 3DS version or anything, but during car rides and stuff, I do remember playing the uh, Animal Crossing on the DS. I don't know if it was just called Animal Crossing. Honestly, I had no idea what the hell it was called, but uh, I am excited for the premise of a new Animal Crossing because I haven't played one since. Like, I think I tried the 3DS one, but I didn't really play too much of it, but now that I have the Switch and I can play it, you know, on my you know, big screen or I can play it portable mode, I'm interested in giving uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons another shot. So that is number 10. Number 9, we have a game that was shown at last year's E3, I believe, and a couple of games on here have already been revealed, but I just decided to include them anyways. Uh, Dying Light 2. Dying Light is a game I didn't get to play until way late into its cycle of existing. Uh, but I did play Dying Light a good bit with some friends. Uh, I enjoyed the game for what it is. The parkour system is really great. Uh, zombie games are a little oversaturated nowadays. But uh, I did enjoy Dying Light. And the second one obviously looks a lot better than Dying Light 1 does. Uh, and I'm excited to play through this with friends. Honestly, that's the only reason in my list. It's a good game to play with friends. So Dying Light 2 is number 9. Coming in at number 8, we have a childhood favorite game coming back, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Uh, the Lego Star Wars games were one of my most played games when I was a kid, back with uh, Lego Star Wars, I think it was just called Lego Star Wars, then Lego Star Wars 2, uh, the original trilogy, I don't remember exactly what those two were called. But I did play those two games a shit ton back on the PlayStation 2. And uh, I didn't really dabble too much with the complete saga, but I'm interested to give this game another shot. I know I'm like 21 and shit. I'm like all adult and shit, but uh, the games are pretty fun for what they are. A lot of collectibles and shit to do. It's, it's a generally a fun game, so I'm excited to see uh, all nine films in one game and see how they go about making this. Hopefully it stays the, like, the original movie stay true to their original games because I did have a lot of fun playing those games. And I'm pretty interested to play uh, Lego Star Wars. I might even do it co-op if that's an option with one of my buddies, which would be cool. So that is number eight, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga. Number seven, we have Doom Eternal, the sequel to 2016's Doom, which is a highly acclaimed fucking game, let me tell you. But to be honest with you, I have not played too much of Doom. But the sequel looks pretty damn good. It looks a little more open. Uh, I definitely enjoy how the game feels. I really need to give Doom another shot. Maybe I'll... Uh, Play it on stream here one day. But I am pretty excited for Doom Eternal. It was really the only thing decent that was shown at Bethesda's E3 conference this year. So Doom Eternal is number 7. I do apologize that I'm not talking too much about some of these games. Uh, but uh, there are games on here I'm more excited than others, of course. So let's just go ahead and move on. Number 6, we have Arcane Studios' new game, Deathloop. Uh, uh, fucking Arcane Studios, sorry, I can't even talk. Uh, they made Dishonored. Dishonored is definitely on my list of top gaming franchises I've played. I love stealth games, and Dishonored is just a fantastic game, the first one, even the second one. Uh, fantastic games. I'm a little saddened that we aren't getting Dishonored 3, but I understand they need to take a break. Deathloop looks interesting. Um, for sure, I'm interested to see how they, they pull this off. Seems like this sounds like a 1v1, like, I don't, I don't really know what the fuck it's supposed to be, to be completely honest with you, but it does look pretty cool. If you haven't watched the trailer for, for, uh, Deathloop, go check it out. Number five, we have Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands was actually a pretty cool game. I played that a little bit with a, with my cousin, actually. Uh, we had a fun time co-op in that game, so I'm interested to see if Breakpoint uh, kind of improves on some of the weird issues I had with Wildlands, which was kind of just lackluster um, animations, and the game felt pretty clunky at times, and I'm hoping that Breakpoint kind of 
adds a little more uh, fluidity to some of these animations because uh, the game to me uh, wildlands felt pretty uh, janky i don't know if anyone else feels like that but me personally i thought the game was a little janky uh but i'm interested in breakpoint i haven't looked in too much into it but uh, the premise of it definitely excites me that's why it is number five Number four, probably the biggest game, one of the biggest of E3, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. I have never played a CD Projekt Red game. I think I tried to play like Witcher 2 at one point on the Xbox, but never played Witcher 3, never really even touched a game by these developers. But this game looks fucking sick, dude. Like open world RPG, uh, it just is like cyber, it's, it's fucking crazy, dude. The game looks absolutely insane graphics wise. Uh, I'm interested to see. I don't. I haven't played a good open world RPG in a bit, so this is definitely very exciting to see. Um, I'm excited as fuck to actually play this game because it does look pretty fucking good. Um, and like I said, I've never played a CD Projekt Red game before, so this will be pretty cool. Now we're in the top three, starting with number three. We got Watch Dogs Legion, which I was very excited to see announced. Uh, Watch Dogs 1 was a pretty good game. Uh, back around when the PS4 launched. I think it came out in 2014. It was supposed to be a PS4 launch title. Didn't end up happening. But Watch Dogs 1 was a very fun game. I definitely played through it a couple times. Had fun doing the free roam and hacking all the shit. Like the fucking stoplights and shit. And Watch Dogs 2 took it to a whole new fucking level. Definitely an improvement over Watch Dogs 1. I had a lot of fun with Watch Dogs 2. Played it on PS4. Played it on PC a bit. Had a lot of fun with that. This game is like... I. It fucking looks insane. Basically, you can control any NPC, get like a fucking little group people going and shit. The game looks fucking insane, and I'm excited to return to the Watch Dogs world, especially because um, Watch Dogs 2 was great. Watch Dogs 1 was good as well. So I'm interested to see uh, how good Watch Dogs 3 will do. Number two is the long awaited fucking Avengers project from Square Enix, which I've never really played much of Final Fantasy or anything. I really don't give a shit about that. I didn't watch that conference for no fucking Final Fantasy. I watched that shit for this game, The Avengers. I think it's just Avengers. Is it Marvel's Avengers? The Avengers? I, I honestly don't even remember. But this Avengers game, it looks good. I have some like issues like. I'm hoping like the quick time events aren't a big thing that would kind of ruin it. Uh, I, I, you know, Spider-Man was a fantastic game and that came out on PS4. You got the Batman Arkham series, two really good games that did the superhero genre right. Uh, so I'm hoping they get it right with this game, like solid uh, flying around as Iron Man that has to be solid and the combat has to be solid, especially for Captain America and the Hulk as well, which we haven't had a Hulk game when was the last fucking game that had the Hulk in it? Like, was it Incredible Hulk on, like, the PS2, 360, when that 2008 movie came out? I don't know. But uh, I'm excited to see this game. And I, I want to see more gameplay, obviously, of course. But I'm excited for this game. Like, Spider-Man was really good. So if the Avengers get the same kind of treatment, that'll be awesome. Uh, the the, uh, the actors, like, the way they look. I was expecting MCU, but I knew I really shouldn't have expected that. There's nothing wrong with how the character designed or anything. I'm just hoping the game feels good and each hero feels good as well. Finally, we're here for our number one game of E3 2019. And I gotta say, it, Halo Infinite, man. I honestly am so excited for Halo Infinite, especially once Master Chief was announced, the Master Chief Collection, sorry, was announced to be coming to PC. I am more excited for Halo than ever. Like, I love Halo. Played all the games. Fantastic series. Multiplayer is amazing. Storyline, definitely fucking amazing. But Infinite has to be good. Okay? Because after Bungie kind of dropped Halo, you know, we had Halo 4, which wasn't a bad game by any means. It was fun. The multiplayer was fun. But it kind of started to lose that Halo charm, really. Like, the series kind of went like this a little bit. A little bit downhill. Um, and Halo 5, while a very good game multiplayer-wise, had a very awful campaign. Like, I, I don't know what it was about 2015. You had that shit-ass Black Ops 3 campaign and this shit-ass Halo 5 campaign. They really got to do something good here. Master Chief main character, like they've already confirmed. Like, this, this story has to be good. The multiplayer has to be good. This is like Halo's last chance to really, like, fucking bring it, dude. So... 
I'm excited for Halo Infinite. I was very disappointed that there was no gameplay, uh, you know, revealed here at E3. But it is launching with the new Xbox, which I probably won't get because Halo Halo Infinite is coming to PC. I have a PC, so why the hell would I get it on Xbox? But uh, I'm excited for this game. I'm just worried because Halo 5 is kind of, it's kind of, eh. Halo 4 is a little meh. But uh, as long as they really deliver what the fans want with Halo Infinite, especially now that you have all this hype with MCC and Reach, you know, coming to PC, like they got to get this game right. And Halo One, uh, Halo Infinite, sorry, is definitely my number one game of E3 2019. Well, there you have it, guys. That was my top 10 list of games from E3 2019. Hopefully anything I said in this video made sense, because if it didn't, that's going to fucking suck. It's been a while since I've recorded, so... I'm a little rusty. I'm a little, I'm a little rusty. This may seem rushed and shit, but it's just because I'm a little rusty. But uh, I'm definitely going to be working on this other E3 video, which will probably come out before this one. Uh, we'll get that out. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'll catch you guys in my next video. 2018 is a new year. I gotta keep grinding. I got nothing to fear. I gotta always stay clear of all the fakes of all the people trying to drown me in the lake. I'm gonna keep riding. I'm gonna keep spitting. I'm the king around here. I don't know who you're dissing. If you don't check me out, you're really missing out. I'm the number one rapper. Why are you over there smoking cloud? Oh my god, baby. I'm so